Do you want to learn how to make embeds? How to make these fun little boxes that really bring your Discord bot to life? Well, that's what today's video is about. Today, we're learning everything to do with embeds. And by the end of it, you'll have embeds working in your bot in no time. Hi friends, it's James and welcome or welcome back to my channel. And today, this is episode four in creating a Discord bot in Python. And what we're gonna be looking at is we're going to be looking at embeds, which you've just all seen about in the introduction, which will be really exciting and a great feature and something fun you can add to your bot, something to spice up your bot a bit. And it's pretty easy to do as well, which is great. But that's what I'm going to be showing you today. I'm going to be showing you everything to do with that. Every nook and cranny available to do with embeds that's in today's video. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's dive straight into embeds. So before we get started in coding, it's key we go through and understand the eight key features we have and can do with embeds. First off, we have the title, which appears here. And just the main, as I'm sure you can guess for the word title, the title of the embed. Moving on to number two, we've got the URL. And what's really cool here is if we click on the title here, it actually is a URL. So you can redirect users who use your bot to certain pages, which is quite exciting. Feature three is the description. And I'm sure as you can tell from the word description, it's a description of what that embeds about. And number four is the color, which you can notice on the sidebar, which is quite cool. So you can have to set the color to whatever color you want. You might be noticing the thumbnail picture in the right hand corner. And that's number five. You can set your own image for the embed, which will appear in this corner. You can also specify for the embed, the author, who wrote the embed if you wanted to, which is quite interesting. A useful feature maybe if you're writing some sort of bot to do with some sort of, I don't know, article, like fact telling, something along that sort of line. And then we've also got fields. You can create as many fields as you want and you can set them out like this. You can have them on one line. You can have them on multi lines like this. You can have two on one line, for example. Fields just provide another way for you to add information to do with your embed. And finally, we've got the footer. Any small notes, any tiny details you want to show the user, you can do in the footer. So there you go. You have the eight key features of an embed. You might be wondering, do I have to use all of them when I'm making an embed? No, not at all. You can use as little or as many as you want. So now we understand about what actually goes into an embed. Let's get coding and let's work through all the different possibilities that you can do with an embed. So for your Discord bot to show an embed, to send an embed in a channel, we need the user to do something, something to activate the bot, a reason for the bot to send the embed. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a slash command. So when a user runs this slash command, the Discord, the Discord bot will reply with an embed. So in the previous episode, we talked about slash commands. So what we're going to do is for the purpose of this, I'm just going to copy and paste the slash command that we wrote previously. I'm going to go ahead and just rename, give it a new name. In my case, I'm just going to call it embed. And the description I'm going, to, I'm going to give it is embed demo. Just like that. And we can go ahead and we can remove this printer string that we used. And we can also remove this await. Brilliant. We've got a fresh slate in which we can start writing the embed code, the code that the bot will reply with when the slash commands run. What we're going to first do is we're going to write an embed variable, an object which will contain all the different elements of the embed. So to do this, we just do embed is equal to discord dot embed open and close brackets. Now inside of this, we're going to pass in title is equal to double quotes. And for my case, I'm going to give it the title of I am a title. And then we're going to give it a description where we're also going to do the same is equal to double quotation marks. And for the description, I'm going to give it, I am a description. I know, right? Imaginative. And what we've just written is we've written an embed object, which has the title, I am a title and description of I am a description. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to run this in Discord so I can show you what it looks like. And then I'm going to take you through all the other features that I mentioned previously that an embed can do. So color, field. URL, so on and so forth, and show you each one and how it looks and works inside of Discord. So you know when coming to build your own embeds what you want to include and what you don't want to include. So you might be wondering, if we were to run this slash command now, would it work? Well, it actually wouldn't. What we have to essentially do is to say to the bot, we want to send this embed object to the channel in where the slash command was run. So to do this, it's very simple. All we do is we do something similar to what we wrote 
up here in this other slash command. We're going to type await interaction dot response dot send underscore message open and close brackets. And then we're going to pass in embed is equal to embed. So as you can see here, it's basically identical to what we wrote above. And we're passing in this embed object that we've just created here. And that's it. When we run this, this will work. So I'm going to go ahead and run my bot and I'll show you what this looks like in Discord. So I'm inside of Discord here. And if I go ahead and open up the slash command window, you can see here, look, we've got an embed command popping up. We click this and we run it. This is what an embed looks like. A very, very basic embed, may I add. But as you can see here, we've got the title, I am a title. And we've got the description, I am the description. So that is so cool. You've written your first embed. But as you can see, it looks a bit boring. So let's spice it up a bit. Let's add the URL and let me show you what that looks like. So if we head back to where you're coding, to add the URL, all you want to do is this, is you want to come to where we've written the title and the description. And we want to add another attribute called URL. We set it to equals and double quotation marks like we've done before. And all you need to do is you just need to pass in the URL that you want the Discord bot to redirect your user to. So whatever you want for your use case. In my case, I'm going to put this, and which I'm sure you can agree is the best URL to exist on the internet. And if you're not subscribed, please do consider. It would really help me out. But anyway, moving on, let me show you what this looks like now. So let's head back to Discord. Make sure you rerun your bot though, so the changes take place. However, one thing I want to quickly point out is I've just forgotten to put a comma here after the end of the URL. Make sure you have that. So heading to Discord, and if we rerun that command, let me show you what it looks like. The title has now gone blue because it's a link. So as I'm sure you know how a link works, when we click it, it will pop up saying a Discord message saying about oh, leaving the site, that's completely fine. And you can see here it's taking you to the greatest website to exist on the planet. And yeah, that's how a link works on an embed, which is so cool. I'm now going to show you how you can add color to your embed. So again, heading back to where we've written all of our attributes before, we're going to add another one called color. And you might be thinking, what can I pass into this? Well, you could technically pass whatever you'd like. You could pass hex values, RGB values, as long as you're specifying that they're, that they're those sort of values. Or if you have a look here on their documentation, you can see, look, they have loads of different predefined colors you can use, which is quite cool. So in this example, we're going to use one of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the color red. And to use one of these um, colors, you do this. You do discord dot color dot. And then the color you want. So in my case, I'm going to say red open and close brackets just like this. And that's all you need to do. So if we head back to discord again, I can show you what this looks like. And look at this now. We've now got a red strip right down the side, which is so cool. And that's how you set a color for an embed. What we're going to do next is we're going to add an image uh, or a thumbnail, as they call it, to the embed. So let's do this. To set a thumbnail image, you might be thinking, oh, we add it again in um, the area where we were doing it before. Well, we don't. We actually do it in another line. So to do it, we type embed dot set underscore thumbnail open and close brackets URL is equal to and then two double quotes. That's how you set the thumbnail. And then you pass in the URL of the image that you want to display. So I've already got a link prepared, but if you go ahead and paste a link in of an image that you found online, maybe that you want your bot to display, and when you head back to Discord, you will see this. When we run this command again, it prints with our thumbnail image that we just create, we, we just got from the internet on the side. How cool is that? is taking your image from the internet and put it inside of your embed. And if you take a quick look at this closer image that I've done, subscribe. So what sort of signs that the image is subscribed? So why not subscribe? But anyway, that's how you add an image to an embed. We're now going to talk about fields. So as I mentioned before, field is how we add information to an embed. And to add a field, we do it in a very similar way to when we added the thumbnail image. So we're going to go ahead and create a new line and we're going to do embed dot add underscore field open and close brackets and into this we're going to pass in two or maybe three which i'll get into in a second attributes so the first one is going to be name and this is going to be sort of like a subtitle which you saw in the example when i was running through it so i in my case i'm just going to give it field one title 
you then need to give it a value because it needs to have some information. So in my case, let's go subscribe to the greatest channel on the internet. And that's all you need to do to add a field. So again, let's head back to Discord. And we can see that look, it's added a field just like this, which is really exciting. Well, you might be wondering if you wanted to add multiple fields, how does that work? And well, it's exactly the same. All you want to do is just do another line with this add field. Uh, so we'll do it and we'll do field two title. I won't write as long as a description. I will just give it a very short one. So again, let's go back to Discord and look, you can see it's added a second field, which is really cool. But you might be wondering, why are they on the same line? Didn't we want it to be one below the other? Well, there's a reason for this. And I was hoping this would happen so I can show you why. You might have wondered when we got onto the fields topic, if you remember back, I mentioned that we can either add two or three attributes. Well, we only added two. So what is this third one? Well, the third one is an attribute called inline. And what inline does is it basically essentially says, can it allow any other fields on the same line? So if inline is set to true, then these fields will appear on the same line like this. However, if we set inline to false like this, watch what happens. The field moves to the line below. So as I said, inline is whether you want multiple fields on the same line. If you do set inline to true, if you don't set inline to false. And you can have your inline on each field you create. So let's say on our second one here, we set inline equal to true. And we create another field. We'll give it a title field three. Also keeping inline to true. And we run this, you can see what happens. It puts the third field on the same line as the second. And, as, and that's because of inline being true. Hopefully that all makes sense. And that's everything to do with fields. And you can have as many fields as you would like. So just go ahead making new lines with the add field tag if that's what you'd like. And we're now, we're now we're going to look at the footer. And due to footer, it's very similar to the, the ones we've just written. We do embed dot set underscore footer open and close brackets and then all we want to do is pass in the text and you can write whatever you want so this is the footer and you'll see that the footer looks like this it's just a smaller piece of text at the bottom of the embed a footer which is quite cool and last but not least is the author to do the author we're going to create a new line as well we can do embed dot set underscore author open and close brackets, name is equal to, and this is the name of the author. So let's say you're doing um, some sort of fact-based embed, maybe you're pulling some I don't know, information and you want to reference some scientist who's said some information about their, I don't know, some, something they've discovered. Well, then you could put the name of the scientist in here. However, in my case here, I'm going to show you how we can get the name of the person who executed the slash command as the author's name, which is quite cool. So let's say I executed the slash command, I'd want my name to be the author of this embed. So to do this, all we do is we type interaction dot user dot name, just like that. And that will set my name as the author, my username may I add of Discord. And now you can also set a URL. Maybe you wanted it so it redirects to someone's, I don't know, Instagram profile, if they click on the author's name, or it redirects to, I don't know, a Wikipedia page. You see what I mean? So you can set whatever the author's name is to a link. In my case, I'm going to set it to the greatest website of all time, which you should already know by now. And that's it. And the last attribute in which you can add set for an author is an image or the icon URL. So you can actually set a profile photo for the author, which is quite cool. Quite cool. So to do that, you just do icon underscore URL is equal to and then double quotes. And here you need to pass in an image that you want to be the profile photo. In my case, I've got a link here. So let's run this and let me show you what this looks like. As you can see here, look, the author has been created at the top. The craziest boy is the name, which is my username. And you can see here, my profile icon has appeared of a beautiful pepper. And look, if I hover over my name, a link pops up where it redirects to the greatest website, which is really cool. And that's it, there you go. We've now gone through and covered all the eight important features of embeds and hopefully now you understand how they all work and what they do and how you can make it and implement it into your own bot 
However, that now brings this video to an end. Hopefully you found it interesting and you found it useful. If so, please do consider giving it a like as it really does help me out. And while you're down there, why not consider subscribing? It also helps me out a lot. But anyway, this has been James. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.